prepare for trouble and make it double. Hi, I'm Zeta Kai for the Gunpla Network, and this is going to be our unboxing of the High Grade Universal Century MSZ010 Double Zeta Gundam. And I have waited a long time to build this kit. In fact, I've waited since its release date in the year 2010 to build it. It just, uh, just always kind of eluded me. So the fine and lovely folks at Canadian Gundam hooked us up with a double Zeta to build for ourselves. So uh, what we're going to do is take a look at what's on the box and what's in the box and talk a little bit about the double Zeta Gundam. So on the box, you'll see some great box art. You see some uh, pictures. These are like uh, rendered pictures of the model kits themselves, it looks like. So you get the Neo Core Fighter, uh, the core top and the core base, along with the uh, Momo suit itself. And if we turn it over to the side, we get the old school style high grade Universal Century images here. Let me get some lighting. There we go. It's those images there. And uh, they've kind of done away with these. And it, it's kind of a shame, really. I really liked these shots. Uh, you still got an action shot back then. Nowadays, it looks kind of like, uh, well, it looks like this. And you don't get that shot. You get a lot more uh, warnings and things like that. You do get a lot more inf or information now, and it's translated to English. But I do miss, I do miss these shots right here. So spinning it around to this side, you'll see some more images of the mobile suit, the core fighter, the different modes. You can combine it into the G Fortress, which is pretty nice and some of the gimmicks that it has. It's gigantic beam saber, some storage for the thrusters, and no yen price. However, uh, if you'd like to get one for yourself, uh, the yen price right now is 2,530 yen. So it's gonna set you back about 25 to 30 dollars nowadays. So let's see what's inside of the box. Again, as I mentioned, this kit was supplied to us by Canadian Gundam. Be sure to check out their website, CanadianGundam.com, and use the coupon code Gumpla Network. Um, you can do what I did, and what I like to do is I got a big, gigantic order. It's a huge box. There's Karoro. A huge box. Uh, buy, buy a big, giant order. Take advantage of that flat rate shipping that they work very hard to provide us and get your Gumpla fix from Canadian Gundam. So let's open this up. Dispensing with tradition. So you get one bag here, with some stickers, one, two, three, four, very colorful, five bags, and one instruction manual. So let's pop these bags open and we'll take a look at them. Okay, so let's start with the A runner. It is a four color runner, although the colors aren't very bright. Uh, you get this black, the yellow, the gray, and a kind of blue gray. And let me kind of uh, zoom in here. We'll get a little bit better light. There you can really see the blue. So the A runner looks like it contains a lot of like uh, frame pieces in here, some different hands. This is definitely the hand for the uh, beam saber. The twin beam rifles up here and some of the block the center of the kit probably or at least maybe the for just for the transformation some nice vents molded in some good yellow lots of little yellow bits I remember when this kit came out in 2010 there was there was a lot made of the color separation on this kit and you'll see it has a lot of different a lot of runners that are smaller and um, at that time it, it was really at the, at the cutting edge of Bandai's engineering at that time. The color separation is fantastic, as you'll see with the very small sticker sheet. So here's the D runner. Uh, so this white is a little green. It kind of reminds me of the old school regular Gundam. Uh, the head pieces are very interesting because it's not a front and back. It's a completely uh, molded round head all the way around. And then... Uh, here's like the eye pieces, some of the eye pieces here, or the face mask anyway, and it goes up inside. It goes up inside of there, so that's that was interesting. 
I don't see uh, many kits doing that these days. Um, you know, speaking of 2010, in 2010 I had this. This is the, uh, this is like the, uh, I don't know, the Gundam, what is it? Gundam Plastic Models Catalog. This was like every kit uh, that Bandai had made. Not every kit, but a lot of the kits. And uh, somewhere I have it, I bookmarked it here. Um, so here is 2010 was the double Zeta Gundam. There's, a, there's kind of a sneak peek of what it looks like uh, unpainted. But if, if we just go like a year beforehand and, and in the years leading, this is two years before, and the, the difference in the kits uh, when you got to the double Zeta Gundam was really something unnotable. And, uh, at the, and, and for its time, it was, it was really something else. So anyway... Uh, enough of that uh, Gundam history. It's just something I just thought was interesting. So uh, this is the F-Runner. It's ABS plastic, so it's nice and hard. Uh, so this is going to be some weight-bearing pieces in here. Looks like some pieces maybe around the inside of the hips, perhaps. Who knows? Um, again, I haven't built this kit. The neck and some other pieces here and there. The core of the kit, not the core fighter. A PC runner. And here we go with the Beam Sabers uh, SB1. So this is your standard Master Grade Beam Saber, which makes sense because the Beam Saber for the Double Zeta is massive. Uh, the G-Runner in this uh, blue-gray kind of color, like a cadet blue, I would call this. Gigantic backpack piece here. Um, it has to be huge for the transformation, basically. And then like these gigantic pieces here, and then these very, very tiny little thrusters over here. Very cool. Try to get you that nice blue color. Um, nice panel lining here for the edges. There we go. Very nice. Up next, the blue runner itself. A very bright blue, very vibrant. This is the B runner. Some vents. Uh, this looks like it's going to leave some nub marks, unfortunately. That good old Bandai Blue uh, is going to really show those white stress marks. Big shoulder pieces here. Uh, some of the weapon, the handle. Moving along to the Red Runner. This is the C Runner. C Runner. Looks like a stand piece in here. That should be interesting. Nice to see these missiles being red, so I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know if the gray is going to fold over them, or you just have to paint the gray in. We'll find out. I think you might have to paint it. And some more pieces over here. Again, every, every runner has a lot of small little bits. And I know that doesn't seem like much today because a lot of the kits have very small bits like that, but in 2010, for a high grade, to have this many small pieces was something remarkable. E runner in that greeny white. Uh, lots of leg pieces here. And some arm bits. And a duplicate of that E runner. So here is the sticker sheet. Very small sticker sheet for as many different uh, colors this Gundam is made up of. So that's pretty nice. Now, this of course is fully painted and panel lined. But here is the manual showing off the very bulky and large and super 80s uh, Double Zeta Gundam. Well, that's it. The runners, the box, the manual, the stickers. I'm ready to get this thing built. I am absolutely stealing boomsy shot with, uh, with the turntable, except mine's much louder than his. Uh, I don't have the high-end turntable. I have the uh, lowly uh, ghetto turntable. So if you like this video, make sure you click like down below, subscribe to the Gunpla Network for all the latest and greatest news and kit reviews that are unbiased and hopefully fun and entertaining to watch. Uh, let us know down below what old school kind of 80s style mobile suits you love and would like to see reviews of. I personally am very enamored with good old 80s Zeta, Double Zeta style kits and will gladly review any uh, that are requested. So as always, thanks a lot for watching and keep building everyone.